So um, before I start, a little bit of a story time. So I was watching uh, this conference in the comfort of my uh, my office space at home, and literally two minutes before, um, uh, yeah, two minutes ago, uh, my neighbors uh, they decided to start some construction work uh, right next to my office. So I had to flee. I'm sitting now in a uh, in my bedroom. So I hope that everything goes well here, uh, internet. Uh, connection wise uh, we'll see so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about AI in this talk but first a little bit uh, about me I'm fake I work at a Belgian company called Spasi uh, I have a blog fake.dev where I talk about modern PHP development and in Laravel because that's what I do mainly uh, I'm still on Twitter or X or how it's called my handle is fake Mirza and if X or Twitter blows up uh, I'm also on uh, Mastodon, that's uh, the second link uh, there. Now, um, I had the, um, the great privilege on working uh, on a couple of nice things together with friends and colleagues. The first one is Flare, which is an exception tracker, uh, especially built for PHP and Laravel apps. The second one is Odir, which is an uptime tracker. Um, but this one crawls your entire website and it uh, notifies you when one of the pages goes down, so not only the home page. And the last thing that I worked on is uh, MailCoach, which is, dare I say it, a better version of MailChimp. Now, I don't only work on products, I also spend a lot of time on open source software. And with Spasi, we've now um, built around 300 packages mainly for the Laravel ecosystem, but there are also plenty of framework agnostic ones as well. Those packages have been downloaded now for uh, 607 million times, and they are being downloaded for about 30 million times a month, which is quite nice. Certainly, if you know that uh, Spasi uh, is a small company where only 10 people. You'll find a big list of everything that we've done in the open source page uh, on our uh, company page. And I'm pretty sure that uh, there's something there for your next project. Now, um, those open source things, they don't build, pay the bills. We also build paid products such as courses and, uh, and software tools. And if you want to help us, uh, yeah, sustain our open source efforts, take a look at our paid products uh, as well. Now, the open source stuff that we make isn't entirely free. There's a special license on them called Postcardware. And that means that if you use uh, one of our packages, if it gets into your production environment, you are required by law to send us a postcard. And we're happy to receive uh, postcards all, from all over the world daily and we also share those on our company website so have a look there so with that out of the way let's uh, talk a bit about ai so ai this year it seems to be everywhere i think it really exploded last year uh, somewhere in november december with uh, chat gpt and it hasn't uh, it hasn't gone away now um, I'm not a big AI expert, so I'm not here to tell you everything what's possible. I'm just sharing my personal journey here and the things that I picked up uh, uh, from AI. And I started uh, using AI just for a little bit of fun to see it's what, what's possible. And I've also used it after that to yeah, add uh, some features to our open source and our in our products. And I want to share both sides of this story a bit. So we're going to go, go to my personally, personal uh, journey chronologically. And the first time that I encountered or used AI is uh, yeah, something that has uh, yeah, this, this logo or looks like this. Uh, this is Siri by Apple. And to me, that was a little bit of a, of a disappointment because it isn't, it isn't really smart. So this is a false start for me uh, to the AI journey. Where AI really um, yeah, started for me was uh, when I stumbled upon uh, something called uh, DALI, which is also a product of OpenAI, which, uh, uh, which is the company behind uh, ChatGPT. And I think a lot of you already know DALI. You can give it a textual prompt. 
and it will um, yeah, generate an image for you. Uh, for those that don't know it yet, let's see a quick uh, example uh, of this. So what are we going to get an image for? Uh, some happy developers, um, maybe pairing together on some code. Yeah together here together on some code and let's do it uh photo realistically photo realistically i hope it understands that probably a typo in there and it only takes like a couple of uh seconds to get uh some good images i hope my internet connection is fine here too and yeah we see here that we get uh, a couple of images they look fine at this resolution but if i um yeah zoom in a little bit you can see some some strange things uh happening sometimes but yeah it's a it's a good it's a starting point um so how did i use this this for myself um first i should say that um op that dali can't only um generate new images it also has a feature called outpainting, which means that it can um, um, yeah, continue an existing image. So here we have a, a famous artwork and the creators of DALI just fed that to DALI and the AI produced this, which is, I think, pretty astonishing uh, since this matches perfectly the style of the uh, original painting. I, I was really surprised by this. So I play, um, so I wanted to use this and I play in uh, a music band and um, we were um, recording our first album together and then we needed some cover art and we thought, yeah, let's, let's just try out painting. So what we did is that we took a photograph of ourselves in our rehearsal space, um, but we we intentionally didn't put all of our faces uh, in. So this is uh, this. These are my bandmates. This is uh, this is me. So that the AI would, yeah, have to complete um, whatever. Yeah, our our faces. So let's see what the uh, the result of this is. And yeah, it's a little bit strange, but it's actually a quite a good result. And what I was also pretty amazed about is that it try to continue some details in our original photo. So in our original photo, we have this light court here. It, it tries to continue that. It also tries to continue the room here. And yeah, we were pretty pleased by this. And so this ended up as being like the cover for, um, uh, for our album, which yeah, I think is, uh, is pretty nice. Okay, next up on uh, my AI journey, uh, was GitHub Copilot, which I still use uh, to this very day very extensively. So Copilot is something that is created by uh, GitHub and it uses an open AI model. Um, and that model is uh, called Codex. And the model is uh, purposely trained uh, for uh, auto-completing and understanding code. And um, GitHub has provided uh, plugins for all major IDs, such as uh, P, uh, PHP Storm. And I should also say that uh, Copilot is a paid uh, product, but it's free for open source uh, contributors. I don't know what the exact criteria are, but uh, if you go to the Copilot page of GitHub, and I think if you've done enough um, PRs or or opened enough issues on um, open source repos, it will say there that it's, uh, that it's free for you. So let's take a look at uh, a simple example of, uh, of Copilot. I'm going to take here my open AI talk application here. This is just a simple Laravel application, uh, but uh, in the context of this talk or this part of the talk, we're just going to stay in this simple, um, simple command here. So here we have a, a collection. Uh, we are going to make that a string and then we're going to, to output it. And let's example, uh, say for example, that you don't know how, yeah, you should make things uh, upper string in such a collection. Yeah, you can see that it already suggests this, but 
how I normally do this, and this is just a very simple example. Uh, I'll do something like this, uppercase each name, and then it will just um, um, yeah, give, give the right uh, thing. If I want to maybe uh, sort the names, how you do that here, and yeah, this, this is just a simple example. And yeah, it, it also can just comment on code that, that is already here. So this is the exact description for what is, uh, what is happening here. Join the names using commas and the word end at the, at the end. And yeah, it's, this is a very simple example, but it works very good on real life projects because on real life projects, it seems to have like the context of your application. It can also do, um, yeah, some more advanced things. So, um, yeah, this is, this is the result of the code, uh, that, uh, uh, that this produces. That's also pretty wild that it's, that it knows that. And you can do, yeah, fake stuff like, um, Let's uh, do the same for the Rolling Stones, something like that. Let's see. And yeah, it just does the same thing, but then the names of the Rolling Stones here. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, let's do a quick other example here. So this is a, a user uh, model in Laravel. Let's maybe add a method to um, give the full name. Uh, it already suggests that. Let, let me just type it. Um, get uh, full name attributes. That's that. Let's get all the blog posts. See if it recognizes that. Yeah, should uh, should um, yeah uh, should import this. Um, but you can see that you can generate uh, some relatively good code quite fast. And in a language as PHP, um, I don't necessarily need it that often. But if I'm working in, for example, a, a language like JavaScript or Rust, something that I don't know too well, then this is a really uh, good, uh, good tool to have. So yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased with uh, with Copilot. Um, let's go back to the presentation here. Oh. Um, like that. So next thing on our way is uh, ChatGPT, and I really don't need to introduce ChatGPT. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you you all uh, know it uh, at this point. It's yeah, really amazing that you can just ask it about anything, and the answers that it gives uh, are are relatively good. Um, maybe one tip that that I'll give you for uh, people that use uh, macOS and uh, in Ray. Uh, in Ray has built in uh, AI now. Uh, so if you um, type something here, say hi to the people at the conference, and I have ask AI. So if I tap here, then I get here uh, immediately uh, a result from ChatGPT here, which is uh, much more convenient than uh, using a uh, using a website. Okay. So you all know chat GPT, and I thought it was uh, really mind blowing, but wh what really was the next step is that they open source and uh, not open source it, but that they um, uh, create an API for this. So you can use it uh, in all kinds of tools and applications. And that's where the fun started uh, to, um, to morph a little bit into the work thing. Like how can I make um, code, how can I make better tools? How can I make better services through, um, through AI? So yeah, um, the API of, uh, of open AI is relatively easy to use. And it's also kind of cheap, uh, to use. It only costs a couple of do dollars for like thousands uh, of requests and it's this API is used by most of the tools that added uh, AI features uh, to their feature set. It's really easy to get started. Uh, also in PHP, I'm going to show you an example of that later. But let me first show you a tool that is, uh, uh, that is using uh, the uh, OpenAI API, and that is AI commits. So what AI commits will do, it's a command line total. Um, it will um, generate a um, commit uh, 
a message for your commit. So let's try it out. I have it installed here. Um, let's see. Uh, these user things are gone. Um, let's make it a little bit more easy. I'm going to remove this one again and maybe just add sort here. So we have a simple example and let's commit this. So I should first, yeah, I should first show you what commit on my computer does. So commit is um, a command or a function, a bash function that I've written myself. So let's take a look at how it is defined. So it's a function and you can give it, um, you can give it an argument. And if you give it an argument uh, like this, hello there. Oh, I hear a bell here. I don't know why, but I hope it's okay. Um, okay, thank you. Um, so you can give it a commit message. And if a commit message is given, then it will just yeah, use that. But if there isn't a commit message, then we will run the AI commits uh, tool. So let's maybe don't give it a, a commit message. So we hit this tool. Okay. Commit. Refactor the demo command to sort names before imploding. And that is, uh, that is indeed what, uh, what has happened here. So I can just uh, use this one. Let's uh, authenticate it. And I've committed using uh, this message and I didn't need to, to think about this. Now, I think for smallish things, this is good because a, commit, a good commit message shouldn't only uh, say what has happened, but also why things are happening and this tool basically doesn't know why things are happening it tries to describe it a little bit but it's certainly better than what i sometimes do like commit whip which doesn't say anything then then this is better so let's take a look at how this tool actually works uh, behind the scenes because it seems quite magical but it's actually very very simple to do uh, stuff like this so I have here the uh, source code of uh, that uh, that tool open, and you can see it's it's uh, it's written in uh, in TypeScript. And if I hunt in this source code for generate uh, commit message, then I can see that there is a, a function here. And here, uh, create chat completion. It receives an API key. So this is yeah the stuff that will go to open AI um, to to generate stuff. And what do we send to it? Um, we send it a diff here, which is the output of git uh, git diff. Um, I should have shown that if you I, I, probably you you uh, most of you know this. If you type git diff, then it shows you the files that have changed in the uh, the um, the lines that have changed so that will all be fed uh, to to the open ai and it will also um, send uh, something that is called a prompt and the prompt that is basically the text that you type which will be sent uh, to the ai so let's take a look at the prompt that is being used in this tool so generate a concise git commit message written in the present tense for the following code if given the specifications below. So yeah, this is basically what is done. An API call is being made um, with this, uh, this piece of text and the, the git diff and the open AI just sends uh, the summarized thing back. So on a technical level, this is just an API call to a fancy service, uh, but it is just an API call. So it's it's really nothing fancy uh, from the standpoint as a, as a developer. Okay, let's move a little bit along. So with the knowledge that um, building in an AI in some kind of application uh, that, that is just an API call, um, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to add it in uh, in one of our own uh, projects, so something that I've built uh, with uh, with my colleagues 
is a thing called Ignition. And it's basically the best uh, error page uh, for PHP. Um, and it has a uh, interesting feature. So most error pages will just show you the error uh, that occurred in your application. But since Ignition was uh, released, we also had uh, a feature where we would propose a solution um, for the error that you're seeing. So um, if you have like, you're using a method in a class that doesn't exist, we would um, using, uh, um, using reflection, we would get all of the methods of that class and we would try to detect, is there some, some method that, yes, it just seems like, and then we would suggest maybe you, you tried uh, to use this. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to yeah, use the AI to generate solutions because we can only handcraft uh, our solutions to a certain point, but we can't uh, detect everything. But using an AI, we can suggest solutions for all kinds of problems. Uh, now, I forget to mention that uh, Ignition isn't a small project. It is the default in all Laravel projects for, for a couple of years now. So, um, yeah, all of the Laravel developers can, can enjoy this now. I should also say that Ignition isn't Laravel specific. So there is, uh, it's framework agnostic and it could be built into, into Symfony as well. If I have some time, I will, um, show you all of that, uh, as well. Um, and I'm going to, uh, talk about Flare. Maybe if I have some time, we'll see. Let's uh, first uh, do the demo of Ignition. So let's go to my Laravel application again. So I need to close this one. Uh, this is the application that I want here. And let's open this one up in the browser. And this is the default uh, Laravel page for a new application. And let's try to um, get an error in here. So let's maybe do this. So this, this won't work, right? So yeah, this is how Ignition uh, looks like, the simple version. So here's the, the error. We show uh, some, some source code and everything we know uh, about the request here. Um, and yeah, that's it. We, we don't have like a solution uh, for this one. This is a syntax error. This, this could be really anything. Now, how would you enable the AI features that we've built into Ignition? Well, you simply have to provide your uh, own API key, and then it will use that to send everything that it uh, knows about your error and send it uh, to the AI. So let's try and do that. So let's refresh again. And normally it goes quite fast, but I'm on a um, yeah, slower internet connection. And you can see that it now also displays um, and uh, a solution for this. And it's actually quite quite good one. So it says, yeah, the word function is uh, is misspelled here. And as uh, as a bonus, you also get uh, some documentation about, uh, at least the documentation about uh, yeah, the routing in Laravel because you're in a file that is all about, uh, about routing. Okay, let's take a look at how this um, is, um, this is used. This is uh, this this works behind the scenes. So let's go to the um, source code of Ignition itself. So let's open it up, and we actually did quite everything about solutions. And here we have every all code that is surrounding OpenAI. Now, how Ignition is built using the the solutions is that. Um, it, um, it recognizes solution providers. And a solution providers is a class that you can give uh, a throwable, so an exception, and that it will generate solutions for you. So it can first decide, is this, um, are we going to be able to uh, fix or, or um, get a suggestion a solution for this kind of uh, this kind of error we have a couple of other uh, solution providers here and you can see here that uh, let's see where it is it's a bad example maybe 
Report solution. Ah, no, these, these are the solutions. I should have the solution providers. So here in can't solve, there's some conditionals um, that, uh, that, that we execute in order to know, like, are we going to be able to, to fix this one? So this is one that can provide the solution if there is a merge conflict. So we see, does, it, does the source code contains this or that? But with the open AI solution provider, we just can't solve anything with this. So if this solution provider is selected, it's going to return this solution, the open AI solution, which gets the trouble, the AP, open API key, and uh, some extra stuff. Uh, with the most important thing is, is caching. I'll get back to that. So let's uh, open up the open AI solution. Um, and let's see how it's, yeah, how it works. So the first thing that it will do is it will generate a prompt. So this is like the, the text that you saw in the OpenAI tool. So let's take a look here. Um, so generate prompt, this will return a string eventually. And instead of concatenating a very long string, um, we uh, decided to use a view in a view model. A view model is just a class um that provides a structured way of passing information to a view so our view that uh, that will be rendered is called ai prompt so i'm going to hunt down ai prompt here it's this one um and here you see that uh, view model uh, being passed uh, passed in so this view model is this type and now we have i think auto completion on everything that uh, that there is on the view model so what is our prompt? Uh, our prompt starts with you are a very skilled PHP programmer. Why is that? If you believe it or not, if you don't add stuff like this, if you don't give the AI some motivation, then it will tell you, I don't know PHP. I can't help you uh, use a professional programmer. But if you say AI, you are a, a good programmer, then it will actually start um, um, yeah, generating solutions. So here we say you are working on a Laravel application. Use the following context to find a possible uh, possible fix. Use this format. So do the format, um, uh, do the fix in between fix and end fix. And we do this so we can parse out this later. And we also say that um, uh, you should add some, some documentation, my screen. Yeah, like this. Um, also include a few links uh, to documentation. And we say that the documentation should be JSON so we can parse that, that out. Here comes all the context and the exception message. So it's this uh, line, the error is on this file. Here's a code snippet, that's the, that's the exception clause. So that is what we are sending. And in my open AI, in my uh, open AI app, where uh, do I have it? This is ignition. Um, yeah, I talk up. It's this one. Mm, I'm not switching perfectly here. Let's try here. Mm -hmm. Ah, here it is. No, I have like an example somewhere. Here it is. Filled in prompt. So. This is like the prompt that we're sending uh, to the AI and I've already filled in some things, some, some errors and the stuff that we're actually sending. So let me send that uh, to the AI. Um, uh, where can I get, uh, hello, just, uh, I'm stumbling a little bit here. Yeah, let's open up the AI thing and just give it our prompt. And you can see that it answers with the fix between fix and end fix and that the links are in JSON. So it really does uh, what, we ask it, uh, what we ask it to do. Uh, back to here. So in that OpenAI solution, we were at uh, generate prompt. So now we have that prompt, that piece of text. And now we're going to use that to get an AI solution. Um, here, we are going to check if we have already have a solution for this exact uh, exception, and then we're just going to get it from 
uh, from the cache so we don't need to make another trip to, to the AI. If there is a uh, yeah, solution, then we're going to return it. And otherwise, we are going to use the OpenAI client using the API key to just send this prompt uh, to the API. Then we are going to uh, cache uh, the solution. So if we get the same thing back ever again, we're just going to use the cache. And here we have a, a small class, the OpenAI solution response that will just yeah, get the stuff um, um, that uh, OpenAI responded with. And here we can just yeah, get the text between fix and end fix. We, uh, we want to get the links we are going to Jason, Jason uh, decode this. So yeah, that's a class to just easily uh, work, uh, work with, uh, with that. So let's go back to the open AI solution provider. Let me open this up again. I'm working on a much smaller screen than I'm, than I'm used to. Um, yeah, it's this one. So now that we know what's uh, in the open AI solution, that will be returned. And I'm not going through the rest of, uh, of ignition, but you know, now that we have like a structured answer and we use that to add uh, to ignition here. And that is basically how that works. Now, let me show you also that ignition really is um, uh, framework agnostic as well. I prepared a little bit for this. So uh, I think it's called ignition app. Uh, let's open up, open it up in PHP Storm. So this is basically the simplest larva, uh, the simplest PHP application that you can make. There's really nothing here. It's just vendor auto load, register ignition, and yeah, let's uh, um, cause an error here. Let's open this up in the browser. It should be HTTP. And you can see that it uh, that it renders. Um, that it renders beautifully the, the error. And this is without uh, open, open AI. It just detects like you have uh, probably a typo here and it tries to, um, tries to give you uh, a solution. But all the beautiful things about Ignition are, are here. And if you want to uh, say that you, for instance, want to do this in a Symfony application and want to use the uh, AI features that I've just shown you, then you can just add a solution provider, uh, just add the new uh, open AI solution provider. And here you can pass your open API key, the cache that you're, you want to use, the application type that you want to, to use this in. So yeah, if you want to integrate this into another kind of PHP app, uh, a non-Laravel application, it's basically, yeah, very simple to do, uh, I think. I just want to, um, make it very clear that none of these things that I've shown, shown you are Laravel specific, even though Ignition is the default uh, error page uh, in Laravel. Okay, let's go back to, uh, to the keynote. So, um, we've, I th think we've only scratched the surface what is uh, possible uh, with AI here. Um, but I do think that OpenAI as a developer uh, using their API is probably one of the easiest ways to get started with, uh, with OpenAI. Um, I also want to give you a little bit of advice. I think that um, we, we, we've seen an explosion of small AI tools that have AI <coughs> excuse me, as their main feature. And I do think that is a little bit risky because somebody else can, can build such a thing very fast and with some marketing efforts just eclipse what you've done <coughs> excuse me i think it's much more safer to just yeah build a product that really stands on its own and then uh, think how can i make this better using ai so that ai isn't your core feature but that your product is good in itself and it's just made a little bit better with ai i think you're much safer if you do uh, stuff uh, stuff like that <coughs> so that is everything that uh, that I have for you. Uh, the first link here is Flare, which I didn't have the time to show you. Flare is basically ignition, but then in production. So it's um, 
an uh, exception tracker and it also has AI features built, uh, built in. Uh, if you want to know more, I've written an entire blog post about how, uh, how this works with, uh, with a little bit more, more details. Yeah, and if you want to hear my music with uh, yeah, that cover that was generated by AI, just uh, hunt for topologies uh, in Spotify or Apple Music. So this is all that I have for you. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it and that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Hi, Freak Gail. How Hi. are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, a little bit startled because, yeah, of the things that I uh, talked about uh, in the beginning of my talk, that yeah, construction was really started like a minute before my talk should should start. But uh, I'm glad <laughs> it went well in my in my bedroom here. <laughs> yeah, it went well. So thank you so much for your talk, uh, for your time, and um, it was useful for our participants. Uh, I don't see any questions for now in Discord chat, but uh, let's switch there to voice Discord chat and we can continue there discussion, uh, yeah, if you don't perfect. mind. Thank you so much.